So today at Tech Yes City, I'm gonna be building my first emulation PC where its sole purpose is to run some old school games. And one in particular that I'm looking forward to playing is X-Men versus Street Fighter. I actually used to play this religiously at the arcade machines when one of my friends uh, worked there and he pretty much just hit the credit button for us and you know, you just keep playing the game all day. And in order to do this, we're gonna be using the Ryzen 3400G and a mini ITX uh, motherboard, as well as putting an NVMe on the back and some good memory and also water cooling it inside this little case here. This is the H100 from Cooler Master. Now, when I first got this case in, Cooler Master sent it over and I looked at it and there's actually not a whole lot you can do with this thing. It's actually a little bit of a weird design where the front of the case uh, hangs out around 60 mil and instead of making it hang out so far, they could have reduced this size and expanded the inside a little bit and then you'd be able to fit cards in here like RTX 2060s, for example, and RX 580s. Now also another thing about this case is before we've been in the build is for a mini ITX solution, they've gone with the idea of putting in a full sized power supply, which kind of does defeat the purpose of mini ITX in some ways. But in this case, I thought about it and I'm like, well, we're gonna turn this weakness into a strength by using a bang job Dell 300 watt power supply. And since we're using an APU build, it's not going to sip up much power at all. So the benefit of that is we're gonna save a lot of money in that we can use this power supply that pretty much wouldn't be good for any uh, of the gaming builds I do on the channel here, because I need PCIe six pin power, especially for something like an RX 570. But on the other hand, it's also got very short cables which again will be perfect in something like this. So this is pretty much gonna be a win for guys like me who delve into these sort of OEMs all the time and you got some spare parts aside and you wanna to put together a little uh, home theater PC or in this case, the emulation master. So this took me so long to eventually set all this up and get it working. And so this part of the video is actually gonna be a bit of a tutorial on how to set up an arcade emulation system on Windows 10. And of course, extract a lot of benefits out of a little small PC like this. Now the good news is, is my little, like I think I got this for 10 or $15 ages ago when I was in Japan to use parts hunting. And the good thing is this works perfectly with the emulation software. So I'm actually gonna go through a few things. Uh, what I did first was I tried installing a, a front end called Retro FE, and this was getting rave reviews. Um, I'm sure it's a good program and I, it looks really nice. But for me personally, it required a lot of work and effort to try and get working. And I spent a lot of time on it. And in the end, it eventually just ended up crashing out every time I tried to boot up a game. And so I asked one of my friends and he said, take a look at Retro Arc. And then we decided to download this. And once you download this, you go to the website, I'll put the links in the description below for some of this stuff uh, to get you guys started. Because ultimately you're going to have to have your own ROMs and that's a different story on how you get your ROMs and what you do with your ROMs, that's up to you. But get Retro Arc, download this if you're like me and you're new to this whole arcade thing install it and then once you open up the program which will be in the root directory you then go to the core updates and you have to install all the core uh, libretto dlls i think they call them and so they're actually attached to retroarch directly so once you download all these core components i just decided to download every single one of them you can then uh, update the whole architecture as well and also update the uh, core update as any time you wish in this program. So it's actually a really powerful uh, front end, RetroArch. And after we did that, we decided to go all the way over to the scan directory. So once you've sort of got this whole platform installed, all the core update files are there and ready to go, you can then go to scan directories. And this is where you're going to have to place your ROMs wherever you put them, uh, you can click enter. And by the way, if you're on a keyboard and mouse, the easiest way to navigate through this is just enter and backspace. So backspace will go back, enter will go forward. And if you hit escape, that'll actually quit, quit the whole program altogether. So once you've got your ROMs ready, and as we said before, wherever you get your ROMs from, I don't care, I don't wanna know about it, but get your ROMs and then go to scan directory. And this will take quite a while. So what's it 
doing after this is it's attaching all your ROM files to the retro architecture platform. And so once you've finished scanning all your directories, you can then go into retro arc and then you should be able to boot up most games and they should work perfectly fine. I started playing some Mega Man 3 and I was absolutely over the moon. I loved it so much, uh, especially playing Mega Man 3 on a joystick, which is something I've never done before. And it was a lot of fun and it sort of brought a whole new life to retro games. So within RetroArch itself, you can configure your joystick to work. And what you do here is depending on the amount of buttons you have, you may uh, have to leave a lot of binds empty, which is what I did because I've only got six buttons and then I've got uh, two buttons up here for optional and then I've got start and select. So I went through uh, and just did the initial ones, which is what it does first of all. So if you go to uh, all user binds under the username, and I'll just show you guys with the video, you can then start to program your up, down, left, right, and all your A, B, um, circle and triangle and right R1, R2, L1 and L2 buttons. And then after that, essentially, I left all the other keys blank because I didn't have them. And then pretty much I booted up games and this profile was saved and I could play my games absolutely fine. So that was really good news. RetroArch was working close to perfect. And I'm going to stop here and say close to perfect because as we said in the intro, I wanted to play some X-Men vs Street Fighter. And this gave me, this is the next part of the build that gave me a lot of headaches because I tried booting this up with RetroArch and it just wouldn't work at all. And then I tried it with Retro FE, didn't work at all. I even tried it directly with MAME. And this is when I started to realize, okay, if MAME directly can't run X-Men vs Street Fighter, I know something else is going on. So I started researching it and apparently the Capcom games have their actual own emulator and it's called the CPS1 and CPS2. And so what you've got to do for this, I got a program called Winkerwax 1.65. And I'll put the link for this in the description too, where you can download this program and then you can put the X-Men vs Street Fighter ROM inside the CPS1 directory here. And then you can open this program and go to load game. And then you can scan for the ROM and it should find it. And then you can boot it up via this program. And just like RetroArch, you can set the uh, joystick manually within the game and it will remember it. And so this was just a lot of fun. Getting back to X-Men vs Street Fighter for me personally was just a blast of the past. I used to love this game. And so that pretty much does it for getting your head around emulating those older ROMs, Nintendo 64, Nintendo, Sega Mega Drive, arcade games on the PC. So there's two programs or platforms that I use to do this, one of them being RetroArch, which is the majority of the titles, and the next being Winkerwax. And that did an absolutely great job. I'm now playing my games, enjoying them. And the one title that I, as I said in the intro, that I really wanted to play was X-Men vs Street Fighter, because I haven't played this for like 19 years, I think now. And back in the day, my two favorite characters were Cyclops and Sabretooth in a combo. And Sabretooth was just so kick-ass. He could do this combo where you could go down, up, and boot him in the air, and then do a little combo, and then do a grab, drop him, and then drop your ultimate. And you could go for over half their health in one hit. And it was so cool. And then Cyclops also had an infinite combo as well. I believe Sabretooth had an infinite combo too, where you could literally, if you were good enough in turbo mode, you pretty much just keep hitting them until they lost all their health. But that was very difficult to do. You had to get on a roll. I actually can't replicate it here today, but I can do my original combos with both Cyclops and Sabretooth. So what we'll do, we'll cut a bit of B-roll here, playing the games, and also this little box here. But in the outro, what we'll talk about with this is what you can do on a budget to emulate your arcade machine. And uh, let's just get on with it, I guess. Optic Blast.
So there it is with this whole setup and the arcade retro gaming uh, PC with some weird components thrown in where we had the budget uh, monitor that I got for 10 Aussie dollars and it's a 4x3 monitor. I think it does perfect with these older arcade games which did have a similar resolution ratio if I'm not mistaken. And honestly after the third game I just started losing track of time because some of these games are just absolute classics and they're so much fun to revisit them on a joystick which I had always played on a controller with the D-pad in the past. So playing Mega Man on a joystick that was just absolutely crazy cool and then uh, obviously playing X-Men vs Street Fighter doing those old school combos bringing back a bit of life and memories is just really a lot of fun and the funny thing is about today's build is this case right here I checked the prices online and it's coming in at 70 US dollars at the moment and I just think it's too much at the moment for a mini ITX case that doesn't have a whole lot going for it in 2019 and I did watch some reviews before I did this review on this case and I sort of wanted to think what's the one thing I could do with it and this was it and that was putting together a budget sort of arcade retro machine where you're not using a dedicated graphics card because the graphics card's kind of too long for the case, but you can get away with putting in a real budget power supply that you don't have to worry about if you're going with an A320 motherboard and a cheap uh, APU, and then you can get the best out of this case. So I would like to see it come down, at least at retail, to its promised price of $59, and I believe it was somewhere in the 80 Aussie dollars, where it does look nice, but it does have some questionable design traits, but I guess we'll just take it as it comes. So Doing it with a retro build like this is really cool, but don't waste your money on a water cooler. Uh, I definitely think about going with like a Athlon 200GE, which is currently 55 bucks, or a Ryzen 2200G, which is $80, and then going with a cheap A320, which can be had for around about $50, and then eight gigabytes, two four gigabyte sticks, that'll set you back about $39 and then you can get a real cheap power supply. You don't have to worry too much. I mean, don't go real like that cheap, but definitely look out for something like a Dell OEM on eBay or something like that. They go for real cheap. As long as it's got the 24 pin and the four pin CPU connector, you plug it into your motherboard and then you'll have happy days. Now, as for a joystick, you can get these for around about $40 new and that'll be better than the one I have here. So that'll have more buttons and I believe some people are saying it's got an upgrade path too. So you can, if you're really getting into it, you can upgrade the joystick and buttons in the future on this one for 40 bucks. So retro gaming has never been better where it's pretty easy to do. And as I said before, we did come into a lot of problems setting this up, but once you get past that learning curve, it's just a whole lot of fun. And now that I've done the learning curve, I can just share with you guys and save you guys the hassles. And that would be go with RetroArch and go with uh, Win Kayaks for the uh, Capcom games. And of course, go get your ROMs yourself and then load them into those ROM folders in both those uh, front ends. And then you should have happy days. It was a pretty straightforward process once I got the right uh, beginner friendly front ends and they worked perfectly. I had no problems figuring them both out. Setting up the controllers in both these applications was a breeze. And then you got to uh, use that joystick and it worked flawlessly. And I will state that I did think it ran smoother in full screen dedicated mode, where I noticed a little bit of choppiness when it was out of full screen mode. So if you wanna play these titles and emulate them in Windows 10, then definitely play them in full screen mode. But other than that, just a real blast to the past and <laughs> I sort of got sidetracked where I didn't upload to my regular schedule because I was figuring all this out and I just ended up uh, enjoying myself as well. And that was only playing three titles. That's all I played here today. And there's so many more titles to explore. So if you guys, I mean, if you guys see me not uploading as much and I'm growing a beard and stuff like that, you'll know what's happened. I'm just enjoying those retro games, just like my 80s music. I love the old school stuff and there's just some element to these old games where they're just like, they're cheesy sometimes, like especially with Battletoads and Double Dragons, they, these games can be cheesy and repetitive, like you're just sitting there scratching your head like I can't do anything, I'm waiting just to get owned. But they do require a lot of timing and finesse 
And that's something I love, especially X-Men versus Street Fighter. That thing is all about critical timing on getting those combos off. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you like this sort of different kind of video? I really enjoy doing this one. I definitely want to set up in the next step, make a budget, maybe, I guess new would be better in this case because everyone can go get the parts and then build something for themselves without being a total uh, PC enthusiast. But maybe we can get like an arcade box set up for as cheap as possible and get the two joysticks and have it two player and stuff like that and go through the whole process start to finish. If you'd like to see a video like that, then definitely let us know in the comments section below. But also in closing out, let us know what you think of today's uh, arcade setup and I did utilize this H100, um, I think it's the H100P as best as I could, uh, because again, as I said in the intro, I didn't, just coming into the review of this case, I didn't really like a whole lot of things about it. I thought for a typical, especially an enthusiast build, it's out of the question. It's just got too big of a space that's been wasted for the size of it, but then you can use, and then they put in that full-size ATX power supply, I'm like, well, not many people are going to be utilizing this space. And it was at this stage I thought, you know, like especially coming from me building in the 2013 Lee and Lee TU100 suitcase case, that was smaller and I could fit more in that. That was a really well designed case. And then this here, I come to this, I'm like, well, what can we utilize this for? And I guess saving money, but still keeping a small form factor and then going with a retro build is probably a good choice. And that's probably the only thing I could recommend this case for or of course if you really like the look of it and you just want to build like a home theater pc something really lightweight i guess that's where this thing kind of makes sense if its price drops down to that promised 59 us dollars but with that aside i hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did then be sure to hit that like button for us and i'll catch you in another tech video very soon the used parts hunt is on the way well that'll be starting tomorrow and there's also some juicy used parts videos coming very soon so stay tuned and I'll see you next time. Peace out for now. Bye.